Good morning, everybody. KT here with Wise Images Photography. How are you guys doing this morning? Go ahead and drop that in the comment box for me below and let me know how is your day going so far since it is already 10 o'clock. And uh, yeah, so go ahead and do that. So what do you guys think? I got something new, got some new specs. I like them for my more mature audience. The readers are fantastic. They're so much bigger than what I had before. Um, I used to have a little bit more skinnier glasses. These are a little bit fatter. So those re that reader section is, is very nice because um, <clears throat> I had to move into dry vocals. Um, the progressives were not working for me. But anyways, so I kind of like them. So let me know what you guys think. I kind of feel like they make me feel spunky and young again. So <laughs> with, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with today's video. Today we are going to go ahead and go and visit the beautiful Trimble Park in Mount Dora, Florida. Now this park is one of the oldest parks in Orange County and it covers 71 acres of land. Now this park has two different entrances. So if you go through the first entrance, that's where you're going to find the office. That's where if you're camping, that's where you're going to check in, check out. Um, that's where you're also going to go ahead and buy firewood. Um, uh, it's available for purchase. Um, one note though, I did notice that, and, and even the ranger said, he's like, you know, it rains, so it might be a little bit wet, so you might have to dig to the bottom a little bit. So keep that in mind. Um, as you drive uh, a little bit further on, you're gonna see a parking lot. You're gonna see a boat ramp. I've used that boat ramp before. It was very easy to use, very nice, nice and wide. And then, over to the left, you're gonna find that you have some restrooms, there's a playground area, and then there's also a pavilion. Um, they have like multiple playgrounds. I wanna say they probably have about, I would say four. They have one in the main area or in that first entrance area. And then they have another one uh, in the kind of by the, the loop at the end and then there's like swing sets and then there's also one inside the campground area. Now there is no charge to use that boat ramp and there's no charge to go into the park, but there is a charge for camping. So you'd have to call them and check out and find out how much that is. Cause by the time this video is played, who knows if prices have changed. <laughs> the park used to be an isthmus. And if you've forgotten your geography from sixth grade, an isthmus is basically when you have a narrow strip of land connecting two bodies of uh, land together. Now it's actually more like a peninsula with a water surrounding it on three sides. It has Lake Beauclair on one side and then it has Lake Carlton on the other side. The cool thing about where this park is located is it's actually on the Harris chain of lakes. So that means when you drop into Lake Beauclair, you can actually take off and go over to the Dora Canal. And if you've never heard of the Dora Canal, it's a very beautiful canal. It's considered one of the most beautiful of like one mile strips of water in the world. So you definitely want to make sure that you go ahead and check that out. Um, if I remember correctly, it's been a while since I went from that ramp to uh, Dora Canal. My boat goes about maybe 15 miles per hour. I want to say it took me about 30 to 40 minutes to get over there. There was some idle zones on the way over. So if your boat goes faster, you'll get over there a lot quicker. And here's a few pictures so that you can see how beautiful this particular canal is. Now back to Trimble Park. So through the second entrance and even through the first entrance, you are going to notice that there are trees that have been here forever. And you're going to find beautiful oaks, pine trees, cypress trees. And I mean, they're just, oh, they're just beautiful. And you really are going to enjoy seeing all the different trees that are there. You can go ahead and admire all these beautiful trees as you walk through the 1.3 mile uh, hiking trip that they have for you. I really find the trails to be pretty easy to follow. Um, you really can't get lost. I mean, basically, if you're like going, oh, I don't know which way to go, 
um, basically if you go away from the water you're going to end up back in the middle of the park so not really much where you can get lost in but they do have it labeled pretty well there's a couple of spots that i would have probably liked to have had some signs added to so that i knew where they went um, but like i said there's only like a couple of jetties off that go back directly into the park in my opinion the best spot to watch the sunset is what they considered the point um, there's there's not a huge view but there is enough of a view that you can look off to the right and you'll be able to see the sun setting on the trees and you can see the water and the sun setting at the same time um, another good spot would be if you're camping you're allowed to go to the docks where they have uh, the campground docks and you can go over there you won't really see the sun setting because it's kind of covered by trees but you can see all the beautiful hues that are coming through now there is another area that you can watch the sunset but you're going to have all the weeds and uh, the, the the grasses that and the foliage that is going to be kind of in the way and there's really not a place to sit so you would stand or either sit on the ground um, and then you could watch the sunset come down um, but you have you know like i said all those little uh grasses in the way um so my opinion go to the point absolutely beautiful as i mentioned this park is really stunning it's like just this little hidden gem so you are definitely going to want to go ahead and bring your camera take tons of pictures i've even taken my clients there for um, headshots before so I really do like this park, you know, but of course when you're doing photography and you're by a lake, you do have to contend with the wind. So sometimes that does make it difficult when you choose a location that's next to a lake. But anyways, I ran into a little problem when I was out there. So let me go ahead and show you a quick clip of what happened while I was out in the field. I don't know if you can necessarily see that or not, but basically I'd had my camera inside the trailer where we had some AC going and then I stepped outside into the wonderful uh, Florida humidity and so it's fogged up my camera so I went to go take a picture of this uh, little green not a little green heron but a green heron and uh, needless to say I can't get the shot because my my uh, lens is all fogged up and everything so anyways that's kind of how you know different temperatures stepping into different degrees of weather can affect your camera gear all right, so hope you guys like that tip. So here's the thing with uh, when your camera fogs up, of course, every cool shot imaginable will pop up in front of you and then you won't be able to take a shot. So anyway, so right now I'm just kind of enjoying walking around. Uh, lots of little baby gators today that I've been able to see and I'm waiting for my camera to unfog. Needless to say, over time, my camera did eventually unfog, which I was really happy about. So what I did was I started wiping the outside of the lens to try to get kind of warm it up and kind of get the temperatures acclimated. But even with me doing that to the outside of the lens with the, you know, the lens cloth, you have to remember that there are still internal component components to the lens. So in your camera and things that maybe you couldn't get a hold of with, you know, drying it with the lens cloth. So I did have to kind of sit around and wait a little bit, but it's okay. I had fun and just enjoyed the nature and just being outside now if you're finding value in this guys please make sure you hit that like button for me now while you guys are out there one thing i want to kind of heed a little bit of a warning for is make sure that you guys watch your surroundings because you guys there are some spots on the trail where you're like really really close to the water and when you're around water you are going to find alligators and you are going to find snakes and we were actually out there walking around and we did end up coming across some baby alligators now where there are babies mama's normally very close behind so and i got excited i kind of didn't think right i kind of ah oh, it's a baby gator and i'm like got all excited and i started to walk up to it and then it was like all of a sudden, it was like, Mama Gator, <laughs> whoa, she's right there. So I'm like back up. And of course, you know, I, I do bring Bo with me whenever I go camping and stuff. So Bo was with me. So I had to back us both up very, very quickly. Um, I always do 
normally keep an eye on the surroundings, but for one split second, I lost, like I got excited, right? So make sure that you guys are, you know, paying attention while you're out there. I'm always scanning up ahead. I'm always scanning on the outside just to keep an eye on my surroundings because you never know when, you know, some kind of animal, whether it be a snake or a gator or something is going to be right there. So I always try to watch my surroundings. So please make sure that you guys watch your surroundings while you guys are out there because you are very, very close to that water. Now mating season is from May to June here in Florida and then the hatchlings come in August and September. And during those time periods, you're gonna find that alligators will be more aggressive because they're very protective. They're, you know, a little frisky, you know, so just be aware of those time frames. Now, as I mentioned, they do have multiple playgrounds. Um, they have restrooms there, they have campsites, they have 15 campsites, and they have docks on both sides of the park. So you have docks on the general side where the general public comes in, and then you have, um, did I say campsites? I think I said campsites. They have docks on the general side for the general public. And then they have docks over here for the campers. And uh, those docks are first come, first serve. Common wildlife that you guys are gonna run into there, you're gonna run into alligators, you're gonna run into snakes. There's gonna be white egrets there. You have white ibis, you have great blue herons, and you have all sorts of different birds that are gonna be out there. And I actually ran across this really cool nest Looks like it had fallen out of the tree, but check it out. I mean, it's absolutely beautiful. It's just like, just the architecture, I guess, that would be the right word to put to this. I mean, look at how perfect it is. It's like perfectly round. And when you think that this little bird who never went and got a college degree <laughs> made this perfect little nest that could fall out of, you know, fall out of a tree and it's still intact. I think that's amazing. Um, now, if anybody knows of a bird that actually makes their nest like this on the ground, let me know. But I I'm assuming that this nest fell out of a tree. Anyways, I think it's pretty cool. I wanna say thank you so much for tuning in today. I really do appreciate it. Make sure you guys go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you guys found value it and hit that notifications button so that that way you get notified of the next upcoming episode and you don't miss anything. If there's a topic that you guys wanna learn about with photography or maybe there's a place that you would like to go visit, let me know. I don't know if I'll be able to go visit there, but we never know. Who knows where the, 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 the wind will take us, so to speak. Please make sure you go ahead and share this video with others so that, that way other people can learn about nature, photography, and then go on some fun-filled adventures with me. So until next time, see you later, alligator.